Many congratulations on being awarded this knighthood from Her Majesty the Queen for your exceptional achievements and, and your contribution to the United Kingdom. Thank you, Pascal. It's, uh, it's a truly humbling, I have to say, and a huge shock and surprise. And of course, it's uh, hugely humbling because it's really a testament of all the people that we work with um, in AstraZeneca and obviously around mm. the world. And, and it's a great honor to be able to, to accept that on behalf of all those people. It's great to hear and it's very well deserved. Thank and you, Pascal. You have had a reasonably long career so far. You're still very young, but uh, <laughs> you've had a, quite a career. What, what would you say were the highlights? I think my highlights, Pascal, have been in AstraZeneca, in all honesty. I think when you think about the transformation that we've been through when, when I started here in 2010, just, just before you came, you look at the quality of the scientists that we have, the physicians, the pipeline, the publications, the collaborations, I think you'd put us now amongst the very best organizations from an R&D perspective. I'm incredibly proud of the transformation that, that, that we've been through and the fact that we are at the beginning of our journey, right? We've only just started growing and the pipeline is delivering and I think we have a long way still to go and a lot more that we can do. Yeah, I mean, you've had a tremendous impact and you're a fantastic leader. And I know you are a value-driven leader. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your values and what is actually uh, driving you? What's been driving you, Pascal, I think is actually very similar to what's driven you and why I think the transition to your leadership has been um, such a good one. It's having really high caliber science. It's making decisions based on rigorous review of our data. It's understanding the unmet medical need and focusing on what the patients and physicians need. And probably most importantly, surrounding yourself by the very best and brightest people from around the world. I think finally, the, the other piece that I think we've really changed is, um, is the way that we collaborate with people. You know, our move to Cambridge, we're in Cambridge um, here today. The move to Cambridge is really all about how we make ourselves more attractive, more porous, more collaborative with the whole of the Cambridge um, life sciences and, uh, and, and ecosystem. And the building that we're going to be in is going to be absolutely phenomenal and it complements what we have in Gaithersburg and in Gothenburg and it just highlights to me that we're science-led, innovation-led, collaboration-led. If you think about it, you have actually led many scientific advances and you've witnessed many of yes. those too. Where do you think science is going and where would you expect uh, the next medical breakthroughs and the next medical advances? So I think in the field of data science and artificial intelligence, we're seeing an impact across every aspect of what we do in research and development, from how we design our molecules, to how we understand pathophysiology and the pathways that are most important in driving disease, to how we run our clinical programs and choose the best performing sites and the low performing sites. So I think creating an organization that's ready for that explosion of data science and the use of artificial intelligence to help us make better decisions across everything that we do is going to be hugely important. We'll have a very exciting year in, uh, in, in the future, really um, moving medicines forward. So if you think of young scientists, what advice would you have for them? That's a great question. Um, love what you do, first and foremost. Really enjoy what you do because you're going to be doing it for a long time, as you and I know. Um, and I think what's most fun about our job is that every month, every year, it's different and it's a fascinating, interesting job. And then it's surrounding yourself with great people and being collaborative and open and actually taking in new ideas and not being stuck with one way of working. Being flexible. Being flexible. Being flexible and actually always wanting to learn. Hmm. So let me just uh, say congratulations again. And on behalf of everybody at AstraZeneca and all the people who've worked with you, thank you so much for all your contribution to our company, of course, but for your service to the United Kingdom. We are all very proud of you. Thank you so much, Pascal. I'm really, really humbled and privileged. And thank you for all the opportunities that you've given me and for all the amazing people in AstraZeneca that we work with. It's a real, real pleasure.